I'm here with Glenn Kay, president of Maritime Geothermal. They're a manufacturer of ground source heat pumps in Petticodiac, New Brunswick. So Glenn, how do we get energy out of the ground with your equipment? Well, basically, uh, geothermal heat pumps are like refrigerators, <clears throat> and we're refrigerating the ground with these units to get heat out of the ground that we can use to heat our homes. So the process uh, is a lot like uh, when you have a bucket of water on your stove and you want to add temperature to the bucket, you want to bring it up in temperature, you have to add heat to it. Well, it's the same way in reverse with the geothermal. If we, w if we refrigerate something or if we lowered the temperature of some product or some uh, bucket of water, in our case the ground, then we actually get the heat back out of the ground and use it in our machine. So the units actually extract heat through a refrigeration process, bring the heat into the house, and we then concentrate that heat and blow it into the house in the form of warm air. So the unit that we manufacture is like a pump, just like you'd pump water out of the ground. The water in the ground for a well would be free, it's just like the water for, or the energy for our heat is free in the ground. You have to pay to pump it out. So you buy the device that we manufacture and you pump it out that way. So do we need to have a well to pump water out of the ground to get this heat? Uh, initially, when we first started manufacturing geothermal units, we were using wells. But the common way today to extract the heat energy is to actually use a vertical ground loop field or a horizontal ground loop field. Uh, and the reason being that everybody doesn't always have water that they can use, a water mm -hmm. well that they can use. So the ground loop fields are becoming more popular. A uh, horizontal ground loop field might take a half an acre to do the job, whereas a vertical ground loop field you can do on anybody's lot. Basically you can do a city lot or because the, the wells are spaced about 25 feet apart and it only takes about maybe 100 square feet to do that. And so we can actually go into any lot, city lot, any uh, country lot and do geothermal. Everybody has an access that has a house can actually use geothermal. The COP of these machines is generally around four right now, which means they'll operate for about a quarter the cost of electric heat or oil. And so if you're manufacturing your domestic hot water, again, you get the same energy saving there, one quarter the cost that would be to use an electric hot water heater. Well, that sounds pretty attractive. It is pretty attractive. In the, in the cooling mode in the summertime when you're air conditioning the house, the domestic hot water that you produce is actually free. So uh, in the wintertime, it does take a little bit off your heating capability of the unit, but in the summertime, you'd normally be throwing that heat away to the ground and just rejecting it, trying to get rid of it. So we fill your hot water tank with hot water and uh, that's free hot water for you. Great, so free energy, that sounds pretty attractive. And well, the price of these units, people sometimes wondering if they're going to be scared when they hear that quote. Yeah, the price of the units, uh, basically right now, if you take a new house, the indoor equipment or the actual heating machine, if you take a look at that, like an oil furnace and, a, and an air conditioner combination, our equipment is the same cost for your interior equipment. So we're extra money basically by the ground loop or the collector system that's outside. And that collector system usually runs about, uh, oh, maybe six to $10,000, depending on how you set it up. And usually with a payback on one of these machines, if you can save two or $3,000 a year, it only takes you four to six years typically to get your money back for your ground loop and that ground loop will last the life of the house so it's a good you know it's a good investment you do that once and uh, you've got enough energy coming into the house for the rest of your life to uh, to do the job many people if you were explain the situation to them i often say you know if you could take a piece of land and just uh, put this special pipe in the ground and it would absorb enough natural gas to run your natural gas furnace all winter you'd be out there with the excavator right away digging and putting that pipe in the ground. Well, this geothermal is the same thing. We can absorb heat energy from the ground and, and concentrate that energy and get enough heat out of a, like a half an acre of land or whatever to heat your house for the rest of your life at a quarter of the cost that you normally pay. And it's renewable energy, which is a nice thing about it as well. So we're not producing uh, greenhouse gas emissions in near the quantities that you would if you were burning electric heat or actually burning oil directly on the site. So if we're running for basically one quarter the cost of electric heat, we're producing only one quarter of the emissions as well. Glenn, thanks for giving us an explanation of how these systems work. Let's take a walk in the, out in the factory and see how they're actually put together. No problem, Joe. Let's go out. So Glenn, we're out in the new production facilities here at the plant. Take us for a walk through and show us how these things go together. Glad to, Joe. Uh, our, our manufacturing facility uh, basically has parts manufactured for it by other companies to our specification. We mm -hmm. do all the designs here ourselves. Yes. We have third parties make the particular components that go in the units, and when they get here, we assemble them. So as you were walking through here, you'll see stacks of parts here that we've had pre-manufactured. So here's, uh, here's basically our, our starting area of the production uh, facility. Uh, all the components are stored either overhead or in these bins and racks that you see here. 
and we start the machines out on these mobile benches basically uh, because there's so many different models we can't actually work with a real production line but this makes it a good way for us to manufacture and here in this station we get the major components put in the units and uh, once the major components are in then the units are wheeled down you can see we do have a production type of a, of a run here but uh, here are the compressors the heat exchangers mm -hmm. uh, insulation uh, electrical components and so on and so forth from the first start of the machine go together when we get finished with this area, you'll end up with a machine that looks something like this one over here to the left. And you'll see all the major components are in it, but no wiring, no piping, uh, and so on and so forth. We then run that machine down in a line towards the welding area, and the refrigeration circuit then gets installed in the unit at that point. So here you'll see, Joe, there are many different kinds of heat pumps. Uh, on the market, we manufacture probably in the vicinity of 150 different models and they can be horizontal units, watered air units like this one, or they can be mini slim units like this one for a large building. These small units fit in the two foot uh, space between the floors on a okay. multi-story building. Sure. So mm -hmm. a building like that might have 50 units in it, very small, two, three ton units or whatever. There's lots of different uh, designs out there. We sometimes heat swimming pools. We'll heat very large buildings. We can, uh, our largest machine that we make here right now is about 65 ton and it would do a, easily do a 50 to 60,000 square foot building just wow. with one unit. Wow. So, uh, so that could be a school or a retail outlet, a, anything like that. Sure. Commercial's starting to catch on as well with geothermal. We started out with, uh, with residential, but now that the price of oil has gone so high, the commercial people with greenhouses with uh, large heating requirements are really able to capitalize on a quick payback okay. with geothermal. Mm -hmm. So the commercial buildings, uh, commercial enterprises are picking up. Mm -hmm. Thus, our, the size of our physical heat pumps in capability BTU-wise is, is certainly following suit. Okay. So years ago, we used to make two, three, five ton units for residential. Now it's not, not unusual to be making 35 to 60 ton units. <coughs> 60 tons just means it's uh, times 12,000 BTUs. It's not the weight of the machine, but the actual capacity. It's the amount of heating capacity right. of, the, of the unit. That's right. Uh, this is our what we call our welding station area. And here the refrigeration circuit gets put in the unit. Uh, sometimes there's somebody over here pre-assembling parts, as you'll see on the racks behind us. But uh, Larry basically puts the entire refrigeration tubing circuit together here. Once that's in, the unit moves again on down to the next station here, which is a pressure testing area. The units are pressure tested with dry nitrogen to make sure that they're not leaking. And uh, as soon as we've determined from that that they're not, then we vacuum charge them with refrigerant. And uh, the units are then ready to be uh, insulated and wired and go on to the next step. So as we move on down further, you can see the machines begin to take a more finished appearance as uh, they begin to get the insulation on the piping. And uh, the electrical gets put in down at this station. You can see our wire racks there as well. And, uh, as soon as that's completed, they move on down to uh, the testing area where the machines are started up. Uh, each one is individually run. We keep a log of how the machine worked, how it performed, and um, that's available to the customer. Glenn, thanks again for the tour of your production facility here at Maritime Geothermal, Petakodiak, New Brunswick, makers of Nordic ground source heat pumps.